Hey, today on Minuteman Preparedness, I'm going to show you how to turn an ammo can into a Faraday cage so you can protect your important electronic devices during a solar storm, an EMP, or any type of like situation that could damage your electronic devices. That'll be coming up next on Minuteman Preparedness. Hey, welcome back to Minute Man Preparedness. So as I said in the intro, we're going to be talking about an ammo can Faraday cage. But before we jump into that, for those of you all who don't know what a Faraday cage is designed for, I'm going to give you the quick layman's term rundown of that. As I've said in a prior video, I'm not a scientist. I have a very bare, bo uh, bare bones and basic understanding of this. Um, and I've kind of went with that and watched a bunch of videos and done a lot of reading on it. So I'm going to give you the quick rundown. So a Faraday cage works by redistributing electric charges on its conductive surface when exposed to an uh, external electromagnetic field, which cancels out the field's effects inside of the cage. So if you had a EMP, solar flare, anything like that, those... Uh, fields, electromagnetic fields come around and they'll, they go through everything for the most part. They'll hit the exterior of this can and if you have it sealed correctly, which I'm going to show you how to do, then your electro, uh, your electronics inside of the can for the most part should not be affected by everything that's going on around the outside here. Um, so that means that any electromagnetic radiation or electric charge is blocked from entering the interior of the uh, Faraday cage, protecting the contents within. So we're getting ready to jump into how to construct this very simple um, Faraday cage out of an ammo can. And of course, with a lot of items, I picked this ammo can up at Harbor Freight. Uh, they're on sale a lot of times. I think I grabbed this for, you know, $13, $14. Sometimes you can hit them on sale for around 10 bucks. But everything else, for the most part, you're going to need to get this done, you should already have in your home. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, now that we got the can set up here, uh, this is going to be your standard 50 cal. They have a 30 cal. I like the 50 because once you get into doing everything you have to do, the, the small things you have to do on the inside, the 50 cal is nicer. Yeah, it's a little bit wider than 30 cal can, but whenever you're putting radios, chargers, um, you know, adapter, wall adapters, things like that inside of here, your space kind of runs out pretty quick. So it's just your standard can. I have it labeled here. I have a uh, WT that I keep set on the no weather bands in here. So when we have storms and things like that, I can pull it out. And then I have one of my GMRS radios in here. I also have all the um, accessories for those batteries, antennas, radios, um, Instruction manuals, the wall chargers, cradles, uh, all that extra stuff. So, as we know in ammo cans, and I'm going to just pop this off. In ammo cans, you'll have a rubber gasket around the inside of it. So, what I did and what some people do is actually pull out the rubber gasket and you can get a metal style gasket to go in place. But I didn't do that. So what I do is I leave the gasket in place and I run some of like the uh, HVAC um, metal uh, aluminum style tape around the inside of it. And then I get several sheets of heavy duty aluminum foil and I'll fold them over top of each other and set them in here and then I'll press them down on the lid to kind of get an outline to make sure everything looks right and you can you can see where the the uh the seal on the uh the can here runs against here and so with this pressing up against that uh the metal tape on the seal there you'll have a good seal metal seal all the way across the top of the can but something you have to bear in mind and I didn't know this for a while, is of course they're painted across the, the whole can's painted and they have it painted, you know, to, to keep corrosion away. But that paint could affect 
the uh, the ability to keep out some of the uh, the signal, the electromagnetic waves. So I just get a hand file and I file all the paint off all the way around to where I get down to bare metal. So whenever you have this lid on and you press this down, this thick full is going to be pressed against the bare steel of the can. So then you'll have a good tight fit. Now I don't have this in here all fancy like I do keep a piece of cardboard sitting on top of everything so nothing is actually touching the uh the aluminum foil and like i said i just have the the papers and the, and a bunch of uh radio frequency charts in here and all the radios and accessories but then i run cardboard on the sides and on the bottom so you have some insulation between your radios and the actual metal can itself you have that non-conductive uh, insulator that cardboard sitting in between there so in the end you know it, it's a pretty effective um faraday cage um you know it, it seems to work out pretty well now some people will um cut on a radio and put it in there and key it up and say hey you know i can still hear it it's not blocking out all the signal well a lot of these things are dependent upon the uh, the signal going through it um a lot of people will tell you to take the antennas off so i've always done that i don't know if it has a whole lot of effect but i do it also helps save room if you take the antenna off yeah you still have the nub here um, on this sma and that could still pull in some signal some people say to take the batteries out i've done that on some radios that i don't I very rarely ever use but this one and the weather radio i do so i just leave the batteries on i just take the antennas off but i feel pretty well suited uh with it being a metal can with no holes or leaks in it with the cardboard insulation and then i've got several layers of the aluminum foil that goes all the way across and overlaps on the rim and i have the paint pulled off you should be pretty well protected um uh, your devices should be pretty well protected uh, from any type of EMP situation. Now, a lot of this is dependent upon the strength of the EMP. And of course, you know, the, the closer you are to the actual location of where this weapon is utilized, you know, the stronger the signal could be. But for common people and myself, yes, you can buy pre-made um, uh Faraday cages and actual like Faraday type rooms that you can put up, but those are extremely expensive. And for common people such as myself, and probably most of you, we, we have to do these home done type of remedies. Now I have three or four of these setups, and then I also have it done with a, uh, a galvanized trash can, which I'll show you that one later on. But I believe this is probably about the best route you can take um, doing the the uh, MP gaskets around the inside. You can find those online. That's probably also a great route to take. I, have, I haven't ever purchased any of those, so I can't speak a lot to them. I've just always went this route, and I feel this is probably pretty good. Um, if it gets through this, then... You know, for the most part, I'm just going to have to do without, but at least I tried and, you know, to, to have things put away safely so they could be utilized in that type of emergency situation. But we can only do so much. We have to remember, um, you know, we can prepare for anything under the sun, anything we could ever think of. But in the end, a lot of it does come down to money, the ability to purchase certain, uh, certain products and time. Um, you know, we, we can, we can only do so much. We can do our best and, you know, pray. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cut it at that, but look into picking up one of these cans and, you know, just setting them up simple like this. Make sure you, you take the, the paint layer off the top. Make sure you have, uh, some sort of insulator in there, cardboard, foam, something like that, where your radios are not touching or sitting on the bare metal and run you a good, couple layers of thick heavy duty tin foil across there and make sure it overlaps and make sure you get a good seal all the way around 
uh, on your aluminum foil and you can see that in the foil. Once you get a good seal, you'll be able to uh, pop the lid back off and look at it and you can see where your seal is so you can adjust. But with that, stay safe, have a great day, and Minute Man out.